Welcome back. Well, one of the stocks of the last few days has been Apollo Hospitals because the company posted a weak set of Q3 results. The profits were well below street estimates, while Apollo Health Co. is seeing its EBIT losses widen this quarter. And the key disappointment has been the sharp margin contraction that we've seen. Sunita Reddy, the managing director of Apollo Hospitals, joins us now to talk about that. Uh, Sunita, thanks for joining us as always on CNBC TV 18. This is Sonia here. Uh, you know, I want to talk a little bit about the margin pressure that you're facing, primarily because of the EBIT losses that you've seen in Apollo Health Co., the retail as well as the diagnostic arm. I understand that the first few years of these, uh, you know, new ventures could perhaps lead in uh, losses, so you'll have to bear with that. But can you tell us that could it get worse before it gets better in terms of the blended margins as well? I think that's a very good question. Um, I think we've reached a phase of peak losses. And uh, in, in the process, you know, in the first three years of digital, it's very important that we get volumes. And critical volumes are very important to scale a business. We have currently 25 million users, and we're doing over 45,000 transactions on the online business. And I think all of this comes at a cost. So we built up a whole new company, which is currently incurring losses. But if you were to deconstruct the revenues, so total consolidated revenues were at 4,264 crores, which represents a 19% growth uh, year on year. And consolidated EBITDA was at 505 crores. But if you look at healthcare services, which is uh, core business and a major part of our business, we had 2,194 crores of revenue, a growth of a, of seven of nine percent year on year, and uh, the the EBITDA came down. Uh, the EBITDA was at 543 crores, so a healthy growth of nine percent at a margin of 24.7 percent. So so clearly the healthcare core business is doing very well. Uh, AHLL posted 311 crores of revenue and uh, 25 crores of EBITDA. So the focus on the diagnostic business with that yielding one third of the income of AHLL is, 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 is very good for the company. The third, of course, you know, you asked about Apollo Health Co. And we're seeing 82% growth quarter on quarter, which is, which is good. And I think it is the fastest growing digital healthcare company. No, the growth, of course, uh, is what you're seeing on the top line, that I get. But you started by saying that you've reached a phase of peak losses. Is it fair yes. to assume that this 100 crore loss that you've seen on Apollo Health Co., is this the worst that you've seen in terms of the digital business or could it get you know, worse over the next few quarters? No, we don't anticipate it will get worse over the next few quarters. I think that we have come to uh, a position where we have re reached peak losses. And, you know, this year should be peak losses and after that it will start coming down. So you can expect to see that from April 1st um, of the next year, you, next fiscal year, our uh, EBITDA will start coming in. Mm. And the I mean, this, uh, Ma'am, uh, good morning, Prashant here. Just to stay, uh, stay on that business, you know, uh, delay in the fundraise for Apollo Health Co., uh, and, uh, you know, uh, competitive intensity on 24-7 have been the key concerns for investors whenever we speak with analysts on uh, Apollo mm -hmm. hospitals. Could you give us uh, so, some way to think about this as we uh, sort of uh, get into 2023? Uh, what should we expect on that front? I think we should really calibrate our expectations. We should look at what is required short term and what is required long term. As we look at losses, I have said we have reached peak losses. I believe that uh, there will be a requirement of 200 crores to for the first half of next year. And, and this is something that the parent company can definitely fund. So for the short term, Apollo Hospital's balance sheet is extremely strong. We have 1,130 crores of cash with us, uh, plus a very low debt to equity of 0.34. So with this, you know, we can easily fund the growth of uh, Apollo Health Co. Having said that, we do have for the long term, we are talking to investors. Uh, they are not strategic in nature, but investors who are there for the long term. And and I think that all of us know that the environment at this time is not the appropriate environment for capital raise. 
but we are working on a capital raise. All right. But, the, okay, uh, that's interesting. And you're absolutely right. I mean, of course, and it's a, it's an overall uh, funding uh, scene which is kind of Pull back a little bit. It's no longer the go-go market we were in, uh, and uh, that, of course, has implications for everyone. Uh, so, if in your case, ma'am, what should we expect? Uh, I mean, pushed back into you. You already indicated uh, the parent has the balance sheet strength to fund the Polo Health Co. Uh, in the near term. Uh, so, uh, should we expect uh, something this year towards the end of this year, or should we uh, look look for this sometime next year? What's what's your sense? If you can leave us with some guidance, some timeline. Let me say this, that uh, that if we were pushed into getting an investor in, we could probably do so in three months. But we believe that the valuation will only improve. Uh, they have done 543 crores of GMB. They're on track for 1,600 crores ahead of the information memorandum. And, and I think we should get the right valuation. So you can, I think six months is a good timeline. I don't like to to state timelines at this time, but uh, yeah. I have to say that we have invested in no, we do understand that. I mean, it's been delayed for a while now, so I guess it's better to just leave the timelines out of the way uh, until you get more clarity. But you said that you're on track for 1,600 crores of GMV in FY23, and that's what you had guided for earlier, I think, 1,500 crores. Uh, you, are you also looking to meet that guidance of 3,000 crores GMV in FY24? Because that's doubling of the GMV. Are you on track, or do you think you could even ex exceed that? I think, well, let me be conservative and say we're on track. Quarter and quarter growth was 84%. So uh, there is a very healthy trajectory. Okay. Uh, also, you know, since you've mentioned that uh, you don't anticipate more losses in the digital business, at least not higher than this, in terms of overall margin performance, uh, what do you think you can do? I mean, will you be able to get above this 11 12% band or do you think you could hover around it, say, in FY24? What's the margin projection, projection on a blended basis? On a blended basis, I think uh, healthcare services will continue to improve. And since that contributes to a major part of the business, I think you will see a hundred basis points improvement in the blended uh, in the blended margin, uh, having and most of it coming from healthcare services. Having said that, the back end of the of AHLL, which is the offline pharmacy delivery, has delivered an EBITDA margin of, of seven point four. Uh, having opened five hundred stores. I think that uh, that this this margin coming from back end will continue to grow and and will really contribute to an increase in blended margins. Okay, uh, so hundred basis points improvement in blended margins is what you're looking at from these levels, correct? That's by the end of yes. FY23. No, I think we do much better by the end of much FY23. Yes, but next year I think you will see a huge ramp up coming from margins. Okay. All right. Uh, all right, fair enough, uh, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate you joining in and uh, great chat as always. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, thanks indeed. Well, Borosil Renewables is the next company we're speaking with again on the back of earnings, but uh, the third quarter earnings set has been a bit muted. Margins have uh, come in sharply lower at 26% compared to 45% last year. It is also important to note that while solar glass demand stayed strong, it was met by rising e 